It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, March 29th, 2012. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, how are you doing today, sir? Well, pretty good. What's going on over there? Uh, Just a little bit of uh, weather, a little bit of uh, clouds and rain and uh, a lot of uh, other fun stuff in the news. And I was thinking about doing this, Bob, this... um, you know, I do my radio show now on uh, Monday through Thursday evenings, 9 to 11 Central on RonPaulRadio.com. I'm reaching out to more listeners, and a lot of people have been emailing me asking more about you because we also do the podcast together. We've been doing it over the past uh, year now, well, over a year, on the Freedom Files podcast. And uh, I thought now would be a great time, Bob, to give people kind of a refresher course about who you are and uh, what it is that you do that's so important to this cause of uh, information, uh, fighting the uh, the, the uh, propaganda and lies of the mainstream media, and just let people know about who Bob Chapman is. Well, I uh, grew up in Boston, went to university, uh, spent several years in counterintelligence for the United States government during the 50s. I'm 76 years old. Um, I uh, lived in Europe, Africa, Canada, throughout Central and South America, Mexico. Um, speak five languages. Or at least I used to do it pretty good. Um, I've been involved in the study of the history of the people who essentially run the world. They've got lots of names. Uh, one of them is the Illuminati or the Brotherhood of Darkness, and they have their organizations which are appended to that, uh, such as the Bilderbergers and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission. And I'm probably one of the world's experts on the subject. Um, and that enters into my thought process and how I conclude <coughs> uh, what is going to happen in the future, and it's been uh, quite effective because... Uh, um, the last 23 years that I've been publishing the International Forecaster, I've been right 98% of the time. Prior to that, I was a stockbroker uh, starting in 1959, and I specialized in gold and silver shares. I was the largest in the world. I had 6,000 clients when I retired almost 30 years later. So my whole background has been much different than most other people's. I lived uh, outside the country for extensive periods of time. Uh, I've been out of the country now for almost 10 years <clears throat> this last time. And um, one of the reasons is that the government has threatened me a number of times, and um, sometimes they're serious. And so I'm out of harm's way, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> it's been a, a very unusual uh, historical uh, life that I've had. Uh, not many people get to do the things that I've done. And um, especially, especially for someone who uh, early on came from very humble surroundings but was gifted uh, with a fine mind by our creator. And so uh, that's the path I'm ta- I've taken. Uh, since 1967, I've done thousands of radio and television work. Uh-huh. I just cut my schedule back uh, by 50%. Uh, <laughs> I look back here just several weeks later, and I say to myself, gee, how did I ever do that? But uh, I cut my schedules down to around 22 hours a week, and uh, I refuse a lot of, of uh, positions. Uh, especially in the evening and weekend. And so uh, I'm kind of slowing off a little bit, but it's the content that makes a difference. You get the truth, 
and uh, I make my predictions, and uh, fortunately, they've been pretty good. Most people have made a lot of money, and that's good as well. Well, Bob, it has been a great honor to have made the cut to be part of uh, the 22 hours that uh, you are on the air every week. So thank you so much for uh, keeping me around. <laughs> and uh, I thought the uh, first thing we talk about today, of course, uh, one of the big topics we always discuss every week because it's important and it's something that most people in the United States and the rest of the world don't really uh, talk as much about or hear as much about. And uh, you, you basically always have your ear to the ground regarding the situations going on in the European Union. Bob, what is the latest coming out of the European Union right now? They try to hide everything. They don't know what to do. We've had two people in Greece immolate themselves. And for those of you who don't know, they burn themselves to death. Uh, one because uh, his business was collapsing, and the other, the gentleman hadn't been paid for four months. Uh, it's a desperate situation. You can't have austerity all at once and expect tax revenues to rise. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Although I heard some pretty stupid things lately, <laughs> which I'll get into. Uh, and so they got no deal there. Uh, the splinter parties look like they're going to take 60, 65% of the vote, which means all the work that was done by the bankers to Shanghai, Greece, may be and probably is all for naught. And that's what they're afraid of. That's why they keep their mouth shut, and uh, they're making up excuses right now. <clears throat> and at the... Uh, Greek uh, country, country of Greece, if they uh, go default, so on Ireland and and and, uh, and Portugal and probably Spain. Uh, Spain, you're looking at uh, a million people a day in the streets. Uh, very unhappy. Can't blame them. And so, uh, and Spain hasn't even, I won't even go into it at the moment, but uh, that's the way everything's headed. And it could be the catalyst that brings the whole system down. But don't expect the system to collapse in two days or three months. It's going to take a while, two or three years probably. And you get these people running around telling you the end is near, and it, it's near, but it's not as near as they're making it out to be. No, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of people out there, Bob, that, you know, they do it intentionally. You know, I both know that they're, they're trying to get out there, make a name for themselves, and the best way to do it is to throw out a, a lot, a lot of uh, fireworks and say the end is coming. It's near. It's nigh, and they've been doing it forever. It reminds me of you know a lot of people that you know walk walk up and down the streets during Mardi Gras, and they have they're they're carrying around a billboard saying the end is near. Repent, <laughs> but the end never comes. So. But I, I do agree with you, Bob. I, I do believe that uh, the situation in the Eurozone is deteriorating. In fact, uh, presidential candidate Congressman Ron Paul, who is chairman of the D Domestic Monetary Policy and Technology Subcommittee, uh, he had a Eurozone bailout hearing uh, a couple of days ago, March 27th, to examine the Fed's assistance to the Eurozone and the impact on the U.S. monetary system and the U.S. dollar. And... I, I personally, Bob, think that it is a very bad idea for us to be uh, getting involved with the Eurozone bailout. Well, I agree. And they're making all that money and credit up out of thin air. Europe is doomed, as is England and the United States. The people who run it did it that way. It was deliberate. And when they get close to where they're going which will be the collapse of currencies, then they'll have a war. So get ready for it and hide your children. Yeah, I mean, definitely war is brewing in the wind, and it's just a very uh, scary time that we live in. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And, Bob, what ways is the collapse of the Eurozone not only going to affect the United States but the rest of the world? Well, I think it runs the other way. I think we're looking more like Europe, England, and the U.S. That's the way they've set it up. And it's going to be bad. 
uh, when it reaches its full length, it'll be worse than the 1930s. I, I mean, that, that's just something that's a very scary possibility because we, we saw how bad the collapse was back then. We, we you know, history. And I, I've had several people in my family, my grandfather, uh, um, my grandfather, my grandma, my granny, and several other people who made up the greatest generation tell me plenty of horror stories about what life was like during the Great Depression. And it looks like what we're heading towards is going to be far worse than what happened back then. Yeah, and you've got um, uh, different things that are going on in our society today that weren't going on then. You've got, you've got these um, events uh, like we had this uh, young black man and now all the black people are climbing on it and saying, uh, uh, let's take this guy that was defending himself out and shoot him or whatever. And um, uh, bad timing, uh, bad ideas, politically motivated. And uh, you have uh, Americans who have been buying weapons and ammunition since the 1960s. What you're looking at now is a massive accumulation. I mean, massive. I mean, you know, we have a gun show and it opens at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, weekend before last. Two 40-foot trailers full of ammo, they're gone by noon. What does that tell you? It tells me, Bob, that we're heading towards a very precarious situation in this country. I mean, you spoke about what happened in Florida a month ago, the uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, Martin murder, uh, this uh, young man, George Zimmerman. Um, and my, my opinion is, you know, we're supposed to live in a society where you're innocent until proven guilty. And he should be afforded a trial. The evidence should be presented and let a jury of his peers decide whether or not he was innocent or guilty of, of what transpired on that day. But unfortunately, it's been politicized, as you said. I mean, not just by the Obama administration, not just by the Democrats, but also by the Republicans. They're using it to, to you, know, you know, fan the flames of hate and mistrust between people. And at the same time, you don't hear any stories about, um, well, I came across several articles a couple of days ago. Uh, this one, uh, this uh, young man, uh, this young white man out of uh, Mississippi State, uh, he was shot to death uh, by an African-American. And then this other story out of South Carolina, uh, six African-American men uh, beat the crap out of one white guy. And you, you see this happening all the time. I mean, I, I don't like it when anyone gets hurt or killed by anybody else. It doesn't matter what your race happens to be. But it's very hypocritical when you, you bring up one incident of you know a Hispanic gentleman killing a, a black a young black teenager, and yet you forget about all the other crimes like uh, the huge portions of black on white crime in this country, black on black crime. I mean it's it, it's just you know they they choose to pick this one event and ignore everything else. Selective prosecution. That's what it is. <clears throat> and uh, I discussed this on other programs and. I want to tell black people, you don't want to get violent. You don't stand a chance. It's the worst conceivable thing you could do. And uh, if charges are brought against this Zimmerman, then they're brought. There's no reason to bring charges. He didn't break the law. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it's it's a very disturbing situation that we have and I, I would advise everybody black white any group out there not to get violent and allow you know the the, the process to run its course and it, it's sad that we're heading towards this point and as you and I both know Bob this is all being done by design they they, they want fighting they want whites and blacks and other groups killing each other in the streets they, they want a race war most of us are against the idea because we see uh, everybody as one and the same, part of the, the human species. We're all, you know, part of the same species, in my opinion, Bob. God made us all. But the, the, the mistrust. Is that. That's right. And it, it's sad because we, we have come a long way since the, the civil rights era. I mean, uh, granted, there was bad times back then. And, I mean, if, if we don't start learning to 
stop this mistrust and this racism. And, and there's racism on all sides. Every single group out there, unfortunately, has a, a, a minority of their group that, that are racist, that hate everyone else that doesn't look like them or believe what they believe. It, it's not just whites. It's every other group out there. And if you allow them to control your group and, you know, you know poke and prod and tell other groups that, hey, you know, you're doing this to us and, and we're going to retaliate like this whole uh, the, the new Black Panthers. They're basically threatening this uh, man's life, George Zimmerman, and they're, they're, they're putting out a bounty on his head. It was 10000 Now they say it's raised to a million dollars, you know, dead or alive, and they have tweeters out there saying kill Zimmerman, and yet the, the police and the uh, uh, FBI don't seem to be lifting a finger about this. Well, they won't because they're controlled and federalized as well. And... Um, very bad situation. But, you know, what are these people in this Black Panther movement, what are they going to do after they've done whatever they're going to do to Mr. Zimmerman if they capture him? Are they going to torture him? Are they going to do all sorts of horrible things to him? Um, are they going to murder him? Um what conceivably could they do? And everything that they would do would be against the law. And nobody says anything to them about offering rewards, irrespective of the, the amount, to go and, and kidnap people. It's a capital offense. Evidently, <clears throat> these kind of people, just like the people on Wall Street and in government, banking, they all think they're above the law. One of these days along the way, somebody's going to do the wrong thing. And when it happens, it'll be a catalytic event. And when that happens, all hell will break loose in America. It's called revolution. And it'll probably spread all over the world. Because you see the demonstrations that are going on. So don't get suckered into it. I agree, Bob. I mean, people need to, especially right now, if the way the situation is across this country and across the world. I mean, there's so many things going bad right now. The wars, the police state, the economy, uh, growing unemployment, and incidences like what transpired in Florida, fanning the flames. People really need to allow cooler heads to prevail here because this could easily spiral out of control. And... Here's another example of, of people, of somebody not exactly using their head, like Spike Lee, you know, big-time film director. Uh, he tweets out the address of the supposed, uh, you know, residence of George Zimmerman. Turns out it was the wrong address. It was this elderly couple, and now they're living in a hotel in fear of their lives. A situation like this, you know, always ends up putting innocent people in the crosshairs. It's true. And I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I just, I don't understand why do they think that going out and carrying out vigilante justice against George Zimmerman is going to accomplish anything? It's not. If there is some evidence out there that eventually proves that uh, he did cold-bloodedly murder this young man, the 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, then let the courts decide. You know, let him have a trial. Let him, you know you know, present his evidence and let the prosecution do the same before a jury of his peers. And that's, sh that's the way it should be handled, not with a, a mob lynch m mentality. Well, uh, the people who don't like the law don't like the law. And they want to do what they, whatever they want to do. And you've seen it with these people in America over and over again. There's nothing new. I mean, when I was in Los Angeles in 64, I lived through the watch riots. I had to go up on the roof of my building with, well, M1 Grand in those days. And uh, Judy and I just holed up with about 5,000 rounds of ammo and uh, waited for them to come. So I've seen it. And incidentally, almost 300 people died in that rioting, not uh, seven or eight or nine or 10, whatever they called it. <clears throat> And I know the people who are involved in 
the people's side, we'll call it. And, you know, uh, you can't do those things in a civilized society, especially when you're doing it and you really don't have evidence. What you're talking about is spurious. And so be careful. I see a lot of people who are black getting sucked in, and uh, I think that's terrible. Everybody feels bad because of this tragedy. But what would you have done if some great big guy had been beating on you and was doing a pretty good job? The guy was screaming and screaming, help, help. Nobody helped him. He thought he was going to die. He was in fear of his life. So he pulled out his gun and put one in him. What else is to be expected? Now, the, the, the problem with this, this situation is that if, if we allow the, the, the mob rule to take over and carry out lynch mob style justice, I, I mean, that's no better than what happened during the time of the French Revolution. And that's no better what happened during many of these other uh, sporadic events. And a, as much as I hate what, what uh, our corrupt, out of control leaders have done to our country, how many times they've destroyed the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and robbed, raped, and pillaged us, along with, along with the elite, I believe that they deserve a trial. I, I don't believe in the idea of dragging them out of their, their homes, uh, you know, stringing them up to trees or uh, light poles or, or putting them in front of a firing squad without an opportunity for, you know, justice to be served, for them to be, you know, put before a judge and a uh, a peer, you know, group of jurors, and be properly uh, tried and convicted. Agreed. I mean, even the Nazis at the end of World War II, they had a trial. Well, they put a lot of people on trial, too, during that regime. They just didn't say, well, you're anti-Hitler and you've been doing this, that, and the other thing. They didn't try to shake them out and hang them. They had trials. How good they were remains yeah. a matter and, and of history. But the point is, they went through the process, which you're talking about. Absolutely. And, and what happened, obviously, in, in Nazi Germany <laughs> was more or less a uh, kangaroo court. You know, I mean, it was not exactly what I would consider a fair trial. But at the same time, you know, I, I do believe in a fair trial and giving everybody the opportunity to present the evidence and have a defense. and then let let the jury decide their your fate. Is, is there you know enough evidence there to convict you? And if there is, then let justice be done. Well, I, I think it's already been decided. Now, there's no case to prosecute. But th there's definitely going to be um, one way or the other, Bob. You, you and I both know that there's going to be um, a lot, uh, a whole great deal of retaliation across the country you know, obviously unjustified, you're going to see a lot of people being attacked and hurt and possibly even killed because of what transpired in Florida. You're right, unfortunately. And you know you know something? Yeah. When that happens, it's going to lead to more retaliation back. It's going to be counter-retaliation. And I just have this fear, Bob, that this could, I mean, I hope not, but I have this bad feeling that this could easily spiral out of control. It could. But if it does, the people who are really going to get hurt are the black people. And everybody keep that in mind. Because, you know, there's uh, what, uh, maybe 35 million black people in the country out of 325 million people. You know, they don't stand a chance. So don't do it. Don't get involved. Mind your own business. Take care of your family. Don't get involved in this stuff. Unless you want to lose your life. Because you don't stand a chance. No, I mean, uh, the, the, the truth is we're all going to be hurt by this. Because I consider black people, white people, any people that live in this country were born in the United States to be Americans. And the you know, when the dust settles, 
we're all going to suffer because of it. Now, some groups obviously are probably going to get hurt a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it's, it's going to have a very uh, negative effect on us as a whole. And we're better than this, I think. And I think we should, like I mentioned a moment ago, we should allow for cooler heads to prevail and, and not allow the Jesse Jacksons, the Al Sharptons, and the, the powers that be of the you know, false left-right uh, government and the corporatized mainstream media propaganda machine to get their way. And what they want is they want violence. And we got to stand against that. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Moving on to email questions now. Uh, this one comes from John Bob. Uh, what is the best markets and exchanges to watch on a weekly, daily basis to monitor the global derivatives and potential market implosion down the road? Well, derivatives are too hard to uh, to follow because uh, 80, 85, 90 percent of them are done uh, banker to banker, so to speak. And uh, so if that's the case, you're not going to find out what they're doing. So there is no way unless you happen to be in the industry. And so that's the end of that. There's, there's no regulation. There's no collateralization. They do what they want to do. Yeah, that's, that's what's sad. I mean, it's it's like having the, the fox in charge of the hen house. It's been almost 30 years on Wall Street. <clears throat> I know what they do. I know what they're up to. I've been there. I've watched it. They just uh, tolerated me. They used to call me Goldie. <laughs> tolerated me. And uh, so I never get involved with them. Nice smile. Hello. And that's it. Moving on to uh, what's been transpiring in the Supreme Court with the uh, Obamacare hearings. Uh, we're hearing a lot of stuff coming out of the Supreme Court. A lot of people believe that the Supreme Court's actually going to possibly strike down Obamacare. Some people are saying, don't bet on it. Bob, what is your take about what's been happening? They should strike it down and give Congress something to do. <laughs> I have an interesting question regarding this, the Supreme Court. Maybe you know the answer. I mean, you're very knowledgeable. They're having the hearings this week, but they're, they're not going to come back to us with a decision till late June. Why, why is it going to take them so long to make a, a decision and, and cast a vote? I, I just don't understand, Bob. They have to pontificate. They have to let you know that <clears throat> they are the legal poobahs of the land, and what they have to say is so important. That's what it's all about. It's just amazing. But, I mean, it's sad because... I, I I mean, I could be wrong about this, Bob, but it seems like that all the justices that we have lean one way or the other. They lean towards the false right or the false left, but at the same time, they, they don't seem to really follow the foundations of our republic, the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Now, if, if they did, then on a lot of these cases, they would simply ask the question, is this constitutional or unconstitutional? And if it was unconstitutional... All nine would vote against it, but you never have that. You always have a 5-4 or a 4-5 decision. I wonder why. I mean, I, I, I just, I really wonder, I mean, we talk a lot about how corrupt the, uh, the executive branch is and the legislative branch, and we, we rarely touch on that third branch of the government, the Supreme Court. And, I mean, I could be wrong about this, and maybe they are great people, but it just seems like that they're just as corrupt and bought and paid for as the other two branches. That's true. They used to be greatly talked about during the 60s and 70s, but you don't hear about that anymore. <clears throat> the Earl Warren court. And then you, you go into these people's you know, track records like Sotomayor's and Elena Kagan and even uh, Clarence Thomas. I mean, these people uh, <laughs> don't exactly come from, uh, you know, positions or uh, paths where you would you would say, well, why why are we selecting these individuals to be Supreme Court justices? It doesn't exactly look like they have a, a track record with following and defending the Constitution and Bill of Rights. I mean, I, I would prefer, Bob, having somebody like if Ron Paul doesn't get the nomination, I would rather have him as a as a justice or someone like, uh, well, he, he's been a judge before. 
Andrew Napolitano and uh, several others that are actually knowledgeable and have an understanding about these two very important and vital documents to our republic. That's a good point. It's a good point. Um, most of these people were totally unqualified. You know, po political appointments. We had the same thing back in the 30s with uh, FDR stacking the uh, Supreme Court. It's nothing new. Politics as usual. Yeah, I just have a bad feeling that you know, all this talk that they've been having the past couple of days is probably not going to really go anywhere. I This is my prediction, Bob, and I hope I'm wrong. I think it's going to be, you know, coming up in late June when they come out with their big ruling, they're probably going to come out 5-4 in favor of Obamacare. Mm. Well, I think it's going to be the other way. I definitely hope you're right. I absolutely do because, you know, it, it needs to be struck down. It's unconstitutional. It's a violation of individual rights and choice. And, you know, there are a lot of people in this country that don't want insurance. They don't have insurance, and they're happy not having it. They don't want to spend the money. They don't want to go to the hassle. They don't want to go to doctors. They don't want to go to hospitals unless there's an emergency that pops up. And what this does is not only does it bring forth the uh, RFID chips, it brings forth these, um, uh, what, these death panels and so many other uh, Orwellian police state uh, initiatives disguised as a uh, universal socialized health care, whatever you want to call it, that I, I, I would actually be pleasantly surprised if we did have a, a 9-0 vote against it. But I don't see that happening. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> uh, being a little, um, uh, I guess, pessimistic about the, uh, the Supreme Court today. Bob Chapman is my guest. Uh, his website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, Bob, what else is going on in the world that you're keeping an eye on right now? Well, we alluded to Europe earlier. Um, I think we're going to see some action on this MF Global. Finally, I think people are going to get their money back, all of it. And um, I think it's become quite evident uh, with the statements by J.P. Morgan Chase uh, that um, God, John Corzine is a criminal, and he should be tried that way. Now, that would be amazing, Bob, if A, not only people's monies were actually returned to them from that heist, from that robbery that they committed, but they actually held some of the big wigs like Corzon responsible and brought him to trial and actually convicted him instead of throwing some little scapegoat under the bus. That's right, and that's why this woman is saying uh, Fifth Amendment unless you give me total immunity. And they don't want to give her total immunity because if they don't give it to her, the case collapses in on itself because uh, the Justice Department won't do anything. No, it won't. I mean, we haven't really seen this uh, the, the DOJ uh, accomplish anything positive in a very long time. Uh, most of the time, they're focusing on going after the people after our uh, rights, such as the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, and you never see them really targeting these white-collar criminals. That's right. If you belong to the Illuminati, you don't go to jail. No, I mean, it's... And you know what? I, I sincerely hope, because I'm I'm I know I just said I was kind of being pessimistic a moment ago about the Supreme Court. I'm going to be optimistic and have positive thoughts about, about this uh, hope that we can get a trial regarding the IM global, IMF global scandal, uh, bring Corzine to justice, try him and convict him. And if that actually happens, Bob, uh, could that actually open the floodgates to, to more investigations, more trials, more people brought to justice? We won't know until we get there. They have such power. And if they get, you know, they can get away with just about everything. Unfortunately, that, that's very, very true. I mean, for too long now, they have been able to operate and carry out their deeds in the shadows 
but over the past several years now, uh, thanks to yourself and many other trailblazers in the truth movement, you know, exposing them and what they've been doing over the past, well, not only decades, but past several centuries now, uh, you know, the, the light is starting to shine upon them, and they're running scared. It's true. They know we're coming after them. Yeah, and and I, I sincerely hope to see the day in the near future where we wake up enough people out there across the world and not only, you know, our average citizens, but perhaps even people within governments to actually start doing something about this. Because these these elitists, Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, are criminals. They think they're above the law. They think they can get away and do whatever they want. They they believe that the rules do not apply to them. And, you know, I only hope that that time does come, Bob, where they are held accountable for their crimes. <clears throat> Well, we just put them in jail or hang them, whichever is necessary under the circumstances. Definitely. And uh, uh, taking a, a gander over to the uh, situation in the Middle East, it's always a, an interesting uh, predicament going on. It's ongoing. It's continuing to get um, more and more, um, well, out of control. It seems like something's going to happen, maybe not this year, but probably sometime in 2013 at the earliest. Uh, with uh, the standoff going on between, you know, NATO, Russia, China over Syria, Iran. And, Bob, do you think that eventually the, uh, the West is going to back down? Or do you think that we're going to go forward into Syria eventually or Iran? I think we're going to go in. <laughs> and the timing will be propitious as to when, considering the financial and economic situation in the world. That's why you can't put a time on it. No, absolutely not. I mean, that, and that's the mistake a lot of people make. They always say, uh, "We're gonna, this is going to happen then and then and then. And they, and they always come out being wrong. And that, that's why it's dangerous to do something like that, to have an exact day and time, because you never know what's going to happen between now and then that might change that scenario. And... <sighs> The, the 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 sad reality is I, I believe that we will be unfortunately uh, going into uh, Syria and as that situation gets worse and worse there that civil war but I mean I wish we would stay out of it I wish we would uh, leave Iran alone but unfortunately Bob like, as you mentioned I mean they're they're just they're waiting for the the right uh, events and once that transpires whether it's a a week from now a year from now or several years from now it's unfortunately most likely going to happen. That's right. Yeah, and <laughs> it's just <laughs> everything just seems to be just, you know, continuing to uh, get worse and worse of each passing week that you're on the show. But, I mean, I guess that's the way it is. I'd like to get to the point, Bob, where, where things start actually getting better and better. That would be nice. It would be, especially uh, in recovery for the economy, which – they can really have it any time they want. They're just not having it. No, they're not. And but at the same time, that doesn't stop them from uh, you know spinning it through the White House, the administration, and through the mainstream media, you know, churning out lies about how we are in a recovery, how we are having growth. When you know you've pointed out time and time again that we aren't we aren't having any of that. It's going the other way. And it's very expensive. Indeed it is, and it's going to continue to get worse and worse. More people are going to lose their jobs, good people, and you're going, to, you're going to see levels of crime increase because people are desperate. They can't put food on the table to feed their families. They can't pay the car note, the mortgage, the bills. And Gasoline. Gasoline is going to be going up, just like with food prices, as the dollar continues to deteriorate in value. And we're going to see a crime rate start to accelerate with you know, a very alarming rate, I think. Especially with these uh, situations uh, like this Martin thing. That only adds to it. Definitely, uh, definitely. I mean, uh, situations like that and other instances, you know, like uh, the rise in uh, police brutality. And it, it's going to get bad. It's going to get really bad in this country. And 
And I, I think that it's only a matter of time before we start seeing real serious protests, similar to what's been happening in Greece and throughout the rest of the Eurozone, uh, transpire here in America. I agree with that. But, the, I mean, the sad reality is, Bob, you and I both know this. Uh, once those protests start, you're going to see the stormtroopers coming out, just like they did uh, at the WTO in Seattle in 2000, just like they did in Pittsburgh for G20 a couple years ago, and just like they've been doing to the Occupy movement. I mean, it's going to get really, really nasty. I agree. I, I can see it going no other way. There's, there's no renaissance. There's, there's nothing happening. No, you're nothing right. I mean, positive. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. And I, and I always try to look for the positive. I always try to reach for some sort of silver lining to give people hope. And I know you do the same thing as well, Bob. But, I mean, right now, I mean, this, this is a pretty uh, precarious uh, time to be living in. Mm. Well, that's for sure. But I, I, will, I will say this, Bob. I mean, what it really comes down to, and this is something you talk about a great deal, is individuals taking action and being prepared and uh, getting ready to weather the storm that's coming. And you've got to do that because you never know when you're going to be unemployed. So you want to have dehydrated and freeze-dried foods available and a water filter, something to defend your family. You get extra money, get gold and silver coins and shares. It's the only patent I know, and it works. I asked the subscribers over the last 12 years. Absolutely. I mean, you, you've got to start preparing for this. And I'm, I'm sure most of the people that are listening right now, it, it's basically us preaching to the choir. But anyone new listening to, uh, to you, Bob, and the Freedom Files podcast, uh, you've got to really, really start looking at how bad the situation is. You've got to do what you can. I mean, I, I know that most people don't have that much money to, to spare, but every little bit you do to prepare for what's coming our way uh, will help you in the long run. Become as, you know, uh, self-sufficient as you possibly can. If you have a backyard, I would recommend you start learning how to grow a garden and start, you know, associating with people that are like-minded. Start preparing to uh, defend yourself uh, and your family in the event that a bad situation does transpire. And you know, that's what it's going to come down to, Bob, because, you know, when that happens, uh, I would not depend on the government for anything. That's right. You've got to take those steps. It's an insurance policy. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, a self-survival insurance policy for not only yourself, but for anyone else you are close with, your friends or your family members, whoever it is that you value in your lives. Uh, you, you've got to be prepared to <laughs> for very, very difficult times that are, are heading our way and are approaching faster and faster with each passing day. And... It, it's sad that it's going to happen, but, you know, it, it happens, you know, it happened back in the Depression. I mean, my grandfather told me plenty of horror stories about, you know, what he had to go through. But if, if you are smart and if you prepare for this, you have a much better chance of surviving it. In fact, if you don't do that, you have almost no chance of surviving. None whatsoever. And and I know eventually, the I mean, this is something that... that Everyone knows about now within the movement the information that we've gotten about you know what their plan is with the FEMA camps. They're going to roll them out as you know, hey, you know if you got any problems, you got any trouble, you know if you're struggling, uh, come to the FEMA camp. You'll be fed. You'll be taken care of. Uh, uh, that's the last place I'd want to go. Especially when the barbed wire is pointed in with. Yeah, it it uh, reminds me of a uh, old uh, Eagles song, you know, Hotel California. Uh, <laughs> you, basically, you can uh, check out any time you like, but you can never leave. It's a good song. One Definitely. of my favorites. But that's what's going to happen. I mean, the moment you go in, uh, they won't be letting you out, unfortunately. That's right. And if you have any visibility whatsoever, you're really stuck. Definitely, and... Yeah, it's, it's it's tough times we live in, and, you know, we, we keep on pressing forward, speaking out, because we have to, Bob. We have to do this in order to get the word out and wake up more people and hopefully, you know, save some lives here. And that's the motivating factor for me doing what I do, you know, doing the show and, you know, talking to you every week is the hope that we're 
not only uh, enlightening more people, opening more people's minds, but also giving them the tools that they need to hopefully endure what's coming our way. That's right. And we are accomplishing that in our own small way. Indeed we are. And, you know, that, that's why, you know, so many of us are out there doing what we do for this cause of liberty and freedom, exercising the First Amendment while we still have it. And, and I'm going to continue to do so on this podcast, on my radio show. And, you know, that, that's, how, that's how we win in the, in, in the, that's how we win in the end, Bob. We have to show them that we're not afraid of them. We have to show them that, look, you can, you know, do whatever you want. You can threaten us. You can intimidate us. You can create any department or police state, uh, you know, entity or pass any laws you like. That is not going to stop us from standing up to you, resisting you, speaking out against you, and if necessary, fight you. I don't think we've seen yet anywhere near as many as people who are going to get involved in this. People right now who know things are wrong are not saying anything. But there will be events which will turn them on, so to speak. And we're going to have a lot of help. It's going to be patient. Uh, definitely. I mean, patience is a major factor here. we got to be patient. we got to stay the course, continue to do what we're doing. And hopefully, you know, people are waking up to us. Hope not just, you know, average citizens, but also hopefully men and women in law enforcement and in the military. And if that time comes when they do put all these pieces together that they've been placing, this police state control grid, and they flip the switch and they start trying to round people up, Hopefully, enough men and women in law enforcement and in the military will will take a stand for the Constitution and Bill of Rights that they swore to defend, and they will stand with us against the powers that be. That's that's the only thing we can really hope for, Bob. And I think you're right. It's a good plan. Bob, we got about a minute left. How can people get the International Forecaster? Well, I can email me at... Uh... Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at Intforecaster dot com. Get uh, either the hard copy or the email version, or uh, we have a report on gold and silver shares, which, if you'd like that, we'll send it out to you as well. And uh, we'll, we'll do what we can to help you. Indeed. Uh, one thing about the International Forecaster is it has helped a lot of people for many years now, and it is a great publication. Bob, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. There he goes, the one and only Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Be sure and subscribe to the International Forecaster. And catch the Freedom Files radio show Monday through Thursday, 9 to 11 Central, 10 to midnight Eastern, on ronpaulradio.com.